Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Saturday morning. Glenn Kellaway coming to you from the basement. Uh, weather's getting a little warmer here. It's at least zero today. It's 32 for my friends in the U.S. It's better than it was minus nine. It's supposed to be 12 and raining tomorrow, which is 24, 24 and 28, 54. It's going to be around 53, 54 degrees in Canada or in Ontario where I live. Ah, today I'm going to discuss long tracks on albums. I'm going to rank my favorite 11 songs that are at least 11 minutes long. So we are starting at the 11 minute mark for the sake of this discussion. Um, long songs, you guys like them? I, I, I have always been attracted to them. Um, I think there's probably two to three reasons why a track needs to be long. First of all, lyrically, it may take that much time to tell the story. Examples like Bob Dylan. Um, or uh, a song is um, virtuosic playing, and it just takes a while for them to tell the story musically and to interact with each other. And the music gets more interesting as it goes along. Um, sometimes it's a bit of both, like with Yes. The lyrically, John Anderson has come up with some incredible lyrics. And then, um, you know, obviously they were exceptional, exceptionally talented musicians and told the story musically as well. So um, I like both that. Also, I guess there's a third aspect. Sometimes it's just a big jam, like, uh, you know, Mountain Jam with the Allman Brothers or bands like that, more jam, jammy band uh, guys more than uh, more than the uh, prog guys who tend to go on and on. But uh, I enjoy it, and there's 11 songs that I just love, and if you haven't heard any of them, I would suggest you check it out. Um, some of them are pretty interesting and maybe a bit obscure, so um, and some are well-known, so... Let's get started. Number 11. I'm going with the album Metal by Pink Floyd, my favorite Floyd album. Echoes takes up all the side two. Great, great album. Um, I guess there's no side two on a disc, but on their vinyl it took up all side two. 23 minutes and 35 seconds. I think it's an incredible song. Really interesting all the way through. Uh, I don't get bored with it. I don't find it pretentious or overblown at all. Great, great song. Number 11, Pink Floyd Metal. Number 10 is Mr. Zappa. I don't even know how this... These these songs, like, when I say number 10, I'm going, geez, how could I rank this so low? Because I love all these, all these songs, so... Um, the Hot Rat, this is the Hot Rat Session, the big box set that kind of breaks down the whole uh, recording of this album. It's an incredible set, but you've got to be a massive Zappa fan to, uh, I think, to like this. But you don't have to be a massive Zappa fan to enjoy Hot Rats, the album. It's a great album. There's a song on there called Jumbo Variations, which is an uh, instrumental track, kind of jammy, uh, but... Um, so cool. Uh, musicianship is outstanding. Uh, the song is 12 minutes and 53 seconds long. A lot of saxophone, guitar, uh, whatever. It really just a terrific, terrific instrumental. And uh, Hot Rats is my favorite Zappa album, too. Isn't that interesting? I'm picking songs from my favorite albums so far. Okay, that's number 10. Number 9 is going to be from this debut album... What a mind-blowing album this was when it came out. I mean, just so different and fantastic with that eerie organ and uh, Jim Morrison's great lyrics and uh, his voice and the guitar. Everything was just an amazing record. Great debut. The End. What a song. Kind of disturbing. Uh, always interesting. Uh, definitely blew my mind when I first heard it. Um, yeah, The Doors. The End is... 11 minutes and 44 seconds in length. Okay, number 
eight. Here's one you might not be aware of. It's a freaking awesome song. It's a it's it's a jam too, but it's great. It's a soul R and B uh, psychedelic. Sly and the Family Stone from their amazing album Stand. The song Sex Machine. If you haven't heard this song, it's just great playing. I mean, fantastic. Uh, I'm going to take out the gatefold here. Um, I believe it's a gatefold. Yes. There we go. So, Sex Machine. Um... I want to say because the bass is so good in it. I believe it is Larry Graham. Um, fantastic song. It's 13 minutes and 45 seconds long. I thought there was uh, some mention of it or something in here. They said something about it. But um, doo -doo 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 -doo. no, anyway. Listen to Sex Machine. It's great. If you're a fan of Bela Fleck and the Fleck Tones, uh, or if you're aware of them, they have a song called Sex in a Pan, which Victor Wooten, their amazing bass player, wrote. And uh, it was written, Sex in a Pan. It was inspired by Sex Machine, by Sly and the Family Stone. You will hear the um, similarities if you listen to both tracks. Uh, next, number seven. Mr. Dillon, like I said, I mean, sometimes Bob just takes time to get the whole thing out of his system, and it's always interesting, even if you don't understand what the hell he's talking about, it's always like just cool wordplay. Um, my favorite Bob Dylan album, Blonde on Blonde. Now, when anybody first bought this record back in 1966, you played it, got to side four, and Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands took up the whole side of a record I think in pop music, that would be the first time anybody's ever done that, and and, and not too many did, have done it since, but uh, it was uh, just a cool song. I love it. Sad-Eyed Lady of the Lowlands. You know, when they were recording this, the story goes that Bob uh, had all those great studio musicians in Nashville. Uh, all the Nashville cats were all kind of sitting around playing cards while Bob's going, I'll be with you in a few minutes, and he's kind of finishing off the song and writing lyrics and then coming out and they they did it pretty much in one take um sad eyed lady the lowlands great great song oh what's next number six yes yes it's number six yes tales from topographic oceans the opening track is 20 minutes and 27 seconds of pure genius as far as I'm concerned. The Revealing Science of God. I just love this track. It's so amazing. Um, this is, you know, when this album came out, uh, a lot of critics panned it saying it was bloated and, you know, just a bit too much over the top. But uh, it, it has grown in stature over the years to be a well-respected record, I think. And, and uh, certainly... One of the top albums in the Yes catalog. Tales of Topographic Oceans, The Revealing Science of God, 20 minutes and 27 seconds. Oh, number five. This is an interesting one. I think this will surprise a few people. Poco. Yes, Poco, the country rock band. Um, this is Poco's second album, which was released in the late 60s. Um, everybody, I think most people are familiar with Poco because they had a couple of hits in the 70s. This happens all the time, this crazy love of mine. That song was a big hit. Uh, I think there was a couple more. And uh, they had one album, I can't remember the name of that album, that was just huge. But if you go back to early Poco, the first album, Picking Up the Pieces, and this self-titled album, Poco... You will be surprised at how uh, musically different these albums are from the later, uh, more poppy, country rock, soft sounds of like the Eagles and, you know, that, that whole era. Um, there's a song on here called Nobody's Fool slash El Tonto de Nadie Regresa. How's that for speaking Spanish? 
uh, 18 minutes and 25 seconds, and it is fantastic. Check out the song, Nobody's Fool. Um, one of my favorite tracks of all time. Amazing, amazing song. Um, the band at this time had Jim Messina, Timothy B. Schmidt, Richie Ferre, and George Grantham. I mean, great, great lineup. And let's not forget Dusty Young. Sorry, Rusty Young. Sorry. Um, yeah. Great, great album, actually, by the way. Excellent. Ah, uh, number four. We're going back to Bob. I don't know how this song is only number four. It could be number one. Desolation Row, the last song on Highway 61. 11 minutes and 21 seconds it clocks in at. And one of my favorite Dylan songs, as a matter of fact, my second favorite Dylan song. Uh, behind Visions of Johanna, and um, man, what can I say? I mean, just full of these images and, uh, you know, T.S. Eliot and fighting up the ivory tower, and uh, there's just so much. Uh, it's it's kind of, I think, uh, an, paying homage to uh, T.S. Eliot and his um, poem, The Wasteland. Um, so anyway, um, yeah. I'm sure everyone's heard this. Desolation Row, great harmonica part at the end. Just, woof, does it for me. Number three. I don't have the album with me because I lent it to my friend Larry Graves for the latest CD exchange and review. It's Uriah Heep Salisbury. 16 minutes and 20 seconds of incredible music. Uh, just genius. I absolutely love that track. My favorite Uriah Heep song. One of my favorite songs of all time. It is just musically fantastic, lyrically fantastic. David Byron sings incredibly on it. Mick Box's guitar solos in it are just mind-blowing. Uh, so much in, in it. Um, just, wow, so good. So good. Number two. Close to the Edge. The song Close to the Edge, 18 minutes and 12 seconds. This album is just pure genius from start to finish. Close to the Edge has four parts to it. Um, time of Change, Total Mass Retain, I Get Up, I Get Down. I just love that part. That is so beautiful. And Seasons of Man, 18 minutes of just pure magic as far as I'm concerned. Close to the Edge. And number one. One of my all-time favorite bands, King Crimson Red. This is a great King, King, King Crimson album if you've never heard it. John Wett and Bill Bruford, Robert Fripp. Wow. The song is called Starless. It's the most beautiful song. Uh, Starless and Bible Black is the, in, is the uh, lyric in the, um, in the song and uh, in the chorus. And it is just gorgeous, a gorgeous track. And uh, I love the um, thought and the image of describing darkness as Bible black. I think it's very cool. Um, great, great album. You, you can hear this track on YouTube off the album, but I would check out King Crimson Live. Do a Google search or a YouTube search, King Crimson Live Starless and hear Jacko Jaxic sing it, sing it with the current lineup of King Crimson. It sounds incredible. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. It's my number one. Um, yeah, so that's cool. Honorable mention to a song I was just thinking about that should have made my list was Procol Harum in Held Twas In I from Shine On Brightly, and it also appears on uh, on Live with the Edmonton Symphony. That, would, that, that probably, I should have added 12 songs that are 11 minutes long, but that wouldn't have worked with the theme, 11 and 11. So I would have had to kick something off, and I love all these songs I mentioned. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Uh, peace out, everyone. We will be back very soon with another video. i got lots to talk about.